white. It's the painter's most used color. It's on every palette, every canvas, almost every brush. Most major oil paint manufacturers produce a range of white tube paints, but they're almost all made from a combination of three compounds, lead carbonate, titanium dioxide, and zinc oxide. Lead was the white of the Renaissance. It's what gives these classical paintings its warmth and glow, but its impact on environmental and biological systems are well documented. Where lead was once commonplace, it's been largely replaced by titanium. It's opaque, lightfast, it's probably always on your palate. But what about zinc? The story of zinc white goes all the way back to the ancient world, where zinc oxide formed as a byproduct in the production of brass, an alloy made of zinc and copper. Referred to as cadmia at the time, zinc oxide was mentioned in medical texts of antiquity as a treatment for conditions of the eyes and skin. Fast forward to the 18th century, zinc started getting noticed as a potential pigment. The industrial production of lead was incredibly injurious to workers' health, and on humanitarian grounds, two chemists from the Academy of Dijon in France proposed zinc as an alternative. But zinc was expensive, and it had other problems. It was too transparent, and the low pigment density meant poor hiding power. It wasn't until 1834 that the first instance of zinc white as an artist's paint became commercially available from Windsor and Newton. The British company solved the pigment density issue by mechanically compressing zinc oxide under high heat. They called it Chinese white, after the color of porcelain, and marketed the paint as a replacement for lead white in watercolor, which tended to blacken in the presence of hydrogen sulfide an ubiquitous component of 19th century European city air. The use of zinc oxide and oil-based paints swiftly followed, with French businessmen Leclerc and Baruel filing a US patent in 1850 for the production of artist-grade zinc oxide pigment. Initial uses of zinc white were mostly limited to fillers and additives for other pigments. It was also used extensively as a primer and ground. The house paint industry took a keen interest in zinc oxide for its ultraviolet absorption qualities. Zinc oxide nanoparticles also doubled as an antimicrobial agent. By the early 20th century, nearly all paint manufacturers began mixing zinc white into their house paints. Its high UV absorption slowed the photodegradation process and zinc oxide also prevented the formation of mildew and other microbial growth. Zinc started becoming an essential component in most white paints. While initially mixed with lead, governments became increasingly aware of its toxicity and lead carbonate was replaced with titanium dioxide. In 1960, Canada banned lead white in house paints altogether. The US followed in 1978. But despite its toxicity, lead is still the white of choice for many serious and professional artists. Lead white has a unique buttery texture and a slightly warm and milky hue bias in stark contrast to its cool, clear, and chalky counterparts in titanium and zinc. Chemically, you can see these differences in their reflectance spectra, a measure of the percentage of light reflected by the pigment at a given wavelength. At 440 to 500 nanometers, the wavelength of blue, titanium white reflects nearly all of the blue photons. Zinc white reflects slightly less, but still enough for us to perceive its cool undertones. But lead actually absorbs some of the short wavelength of visible light and reflects back most of the longer yellow and red photons, accounting for its subtle warmth. And lead was the only white available to oil painters until the development of zinc white in the mid-19th century, when it started to catch on. Researchers and art historians have identified zinc white in the paintings of well-known artists like Vincent van Gogh, Gustav Klimt, and Paul Cézanne. But zinc white isn't without its shortcomings. Several decades of research in art preservation, paint manufacturing, and inorganic structural chemistry have provided substantial evidence pointing to the instability, aggregation, and brittleness of zinc oxide in oil-based media. Its tendency to form brittle paint films prone to aggregate and lump has been known for at least a century. As early as 1907, one author wrote, Zinc white covers poorly, it dries poorly, it stands the weather badly. But manufacturers chose to persevere in spite of these faults because zinc oxide's advantages are likewise difficult to ignore. 
Even small additions of zinc white to other pigments can protect against photolysis, prevent mildew formation, and increase pigment miscibility. So why is zinc oxide so fragile in oil paints? Zinc oxide is an amphoteric compound. It can react with both acids and bases. Drying oils like linseed oil contain fatty acids and triglycerides that can interact with zinc nanoparticles to form soap in a process called saponification. The reaction is similar to this one, an acid-base reaction. Sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid react to form water and salt, sodium chloride or table salt. Similarly, zinc oxide reacts with organic stearic and palmitoleic acids in oil mediums to form zinc carboxylates, which can aggregate and form a phase boundary. You can see the consequences of this reaction in this painting here, by British painter Sir Frederick Leighton. In the bumps and pimples of this once smooth and glossy painting, I am reminded of smallpox, of some sort of malignancy or of some other insidious and rotten thing growing inside. But the formation of these soaps can also be surprisingly beautiful. In as little as seven weeks after exposure to linseed oil, you can already observe zinc carboxylate aggregation in the paint, which the researchers have endearingly called flowers. Here is a 3D electron micrograph reconstruction, also called a tomogram, of one representative flower. The zinc soap structure consists of thin zinc coordinated carboxylate plates separated by a spacing of about 4.5 nanometers. As these flowers blossom, they inevitably decay into the lumps and cracks on the surface of once pristine paintings. There is potentially another mechanism behind zinc white's brittleness and fragility. Zinc oxide crystals redistribute themselves into these sheet-like lamellar structures. The hydrocarbons and fatty acids are forced in between these stacks of zinc sheets and are prevented from moving or interacting with other particles. As the authors of one research article write, it is as if the paint was prematurely frozen in position without the structural stability afforded by the cross-linking that normally accompanies the natural drying process. These results and concerns have prompted a number of paint manufacturers to respond. Here are some of the findings from Golden Artist Colors, the parent company of Williamsburg, an American brand of artist and professional oil paints. The company assessed the flexibility of their zinc white containing oil paints by the mandrel bending test, where a paint film is bent over rods or mandrels of progressively smaller diameters. At the 25.4 mm mandrel, the largest and least stressful on their Pentagon testing apparatus, zinc white began to fail. You can compare this to their control of cadmium red light. At 3.2 mm diameter, 8 times the curvature of their initial setting, the paint film remained stable. It's evident that zinc white is fragile. Its rigidity and brittleness is reinforced in this figure plotting stress against strain of paint films, or force in megapascals required to deform an area by a dimensionless arbitrary unit. A flexible yet stiff paint film would have a stress-strain curve projecting into the ideal zone, as is the case for titanium and lead white, but zinc needs next to no force to completely deform and crack. The mounting evidence of zinc oil film fragility have prompted a number of manufacturers to alter their catalogs in response to the tight guys. Rublev from Natural Pigments have never offered zinc white in any of their formulations. For a low tinting strength, transparent alternative to titanium and lead, Rublev offers lithopone, a barium sulfate zinc sulfide derivative. As a result of their recent research, Williamsburg has discontinued a number of zinc white pigments and offers only large 150 milliliter tubes of zinc white and titanium zinc blend. They write in a blog post, by greatly limiting the number of products containing zinc as well as the sizes they come in, we hope to reduce the casual or inadvertent use of zinc oxide while still making it available to those who truly want it and understand the risks involved. British manufacturer Michael Harding has also discontinued zinc white from their product line, but it seems that the general feeling of European and British manufacturers are more tolerant of zinc. Michael Harding's withdrawal statement for zinc white is a touch wistful. Zinc white was first used in 18th century France and its early misuse as a canvas primer seems to have frightened artists away from examining its unique qualities. 
It has a cool transparency and a subtle power, enabling artists to create slightly hued mixes which retain their chromatic intensity and brightness, unlike those made by the blasting strength of the titanium whites. Dutch manufacturer Old Holland's comments were more to the point. Based on our observations and contacts with various painters worldwide, we have concluded that nowadays such effects of zinc white oil color has been significantly overestimated. The modern zinc white oil color manufactured by the company Old Holland distinguishes itself through high quality and can prevent such negative effects from happening. There seems to be a difference in opinion across the Atlantic when it comes to zinc white. I believe there is enough evidence in the literature for artists to, at the very least, be aware of the discussion. But personally, I'm not at the stage where I care about whether my paintings can withstand the test of time, and here's how I use zinc white in oil painting. I build up the initial foundation and underpainting with titanium white. Once these layers dry, I start to look at the color and value relationships in detail. It's difficult for me to judge value at high chroma, so my first layers are usually pretty desaturated. For the top layers, I begin with a series of glazes, usually with earth pigments, yellow ochre, burnt umber, raw umber, sometimes ivory black. Most of these colors are very low value, even when heavily diluted and they're useful in the shadows. It gives them a translucence and it can help with the transition and soften some edges when the layers are dry. I also use glazes to increase and adjust the chroma and value in the lights and halftones. And this is where zinc white comes in. By adding zinc white to glazing mixtures, I can control the subtle shifts in value across the form without affecting the transparency or the saturation of my glazes. Zinc is also very useful for refining and painting diffuse reflected light. On this pomegranate, for example, there's this violet area of reflected light in the shadows. I take advantage of the transparent quality of zinc to help me compress the values in this area. The reflected light is cool and zinc has a slight blue hue bias that's perfect for what I'm painting. The local color is red and adding transparent glazes of weak blue gives me that subtle violet hue that I'm looking for. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you'd like to suggest other pigments for me to cover.